Hey guys, I'm Emily Powers, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this beach scene. Um, and it'll be, I think it'll be a good cloud tutorial too, because they have these really big fluffy clouds in there. Um, this is a painting that I have done already, so it's kind of big, but so it won't take me nearly as long to do uh, the smaller canvas as it will, this big one, but this is what we're going to be painting. And the reference photo um, is one that I think my mom took it. I don't know. I could have taken it. I don't know. But um, I'm pretty sure she took this one. So you, uh, you can, uh, you know, if you want some uh, reference photos and you have a friend or someone who uh, you really like their uh, photographs, you could ask them to, if you could, you know, paint their photo and if they say yes then you know you've got some more photos that you can use um, and I also have uh, some pictures we took of seagulls so uh, they I kind of just edited them in there just paint them in there like they were uh, there anyway so I got some different ones on the ground far back in the sky kind of closer in the sky so, and you can put the seagulls wherever you want them to. You don't have to put them where I put them. Um, the canvas panel that I'm using is a 9x12 Phoenix canvas panel. Um, and the paints I'm using are titanium white, unbleached titanium, deep magenta, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. And the brushes I'm going to use are... A one inch bright so for mainly the basic filling in and I may use the mop uh, one in, uh, half inch sorry half inch mop I used it last time for the clouds but it may be a little big for such a small canvas so I may use my one fourth deer foot for that but I do know I'm going to use it for the waves so you're definitely gonna need this one and then um, a mm, uh, one fourth inch filbert, and then a three eighths inch angle shader, and a small round. So you can just use whatever brushes you have, but that's, and we may not even use all of them, but I just thought I would get them out just in case. So I'm going to spray my paints and everything so that they'll stay wet, and you, if you spray your canvas, It'll help the paints to go in better. I just kind of uh, real quickly drew just a basic outline. Um, I just took my ruler and since this is a 9 by 12 I cut it completely in half. So most of the time if you're doing a landscape you're not going to do it completely in half but I you know there's waves and things in here and big clouds so I think it still works. Um, normally you would do like a third one of the thirds or something like that but for this I think it works just doing the half so I kind of just put my ruler up and did it on the four and a half mark on both sides and then just connected so that I got a perfect uh, leaf flat horizon line and then if you do half from where you did that point then right below there is kind of where you're going to do like a wavy line for the wave that's kind of washed up on the sand but has gone back already. So it's kind of wet there. Um, it's not, it doesn't have any whitewash or anything, but it is, you can tell that the sand is very wet. And then right just a little bit above the halfway mark a little bit, you're going to do another wavy line. And that's going to be where some whitewash is, it's, you know, the wave's already crashed and it's kind of going up to the sand. And then if you do, I guess it's, you don't really have to do this part at this moment, but kind of a, a fourth, if you split this half of the canvas and then you split it into fourths, then right on that fourth is kind of going to be a big wave and then it disappears. But we're going to be kind of painting over it. so. Okay, and this is a watercolor pencil, 
So any water soluble pencil, um, it's better than a regular graphite because you can, it'll just kind of disappear in your paint and it won't, you won't have to cover up the lines. So I'm going to start by taking some of my titanium white and just a little bit of the phthalo blue and just don't add too much too quick because the phthalo blue really really tints it so you don't want to get too much in there okay and make sure to add water so that it'll flow better and I'm just going to kind of go right up against that horizon line I'm not going to go all the way across because it kind of starts getting darker as you go across. I'm not going to worry if it gets, you know, a little wavy because when we go do the water, we can straighten it out. But I'm going to get it pretty close. Okay, and then I'm going to get some more of that phthalo blue. And get some water. It. So I'm just slowly working up to a darker color. And now I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue, but I want to save this blue right there. And I'm just going to finish going across here. It's pretty, it's kind of dark on this side. Um, the sky is a little darker on this side. And we're just going to kind of blend them together. So it's just going to slowly turn into this kind of purpley blue. Okay, and then I'm going to get some more of my phthalo blue with the just the phthalo blue and white. And go at the top and kind of blend that in. Okay, and then I'm going to get the ultramarine blue and add it to that. So that it's a little more purple. And see, I might make it a little lighter over here, just at this first part. And you want to kind of go quickly or as fast as you can so that the blue, the other blues don't dry out before you get to blend with them. Okay, and then I'm going to get this really dark right up for the top. So the top is really darkest and then it's going to kind of slowly get lighter into this. Uh, this is more of a phthalo blue and this is more of an ultramarine blue but it merges and if there's any white streaks or anything that's fine because we can, um, we can, it'll look kind of like wispy clouds. There is a um, little line type cloud in there. I don't really know what kind of cloud that is, but um, I didn't put that. I just thought it would kind of look better without it. I mean, if you want to do it, you can do it, but um, we're going to kind of sort of get some of those if we get any streaks anyway, so you don't really have to specifically put them in. Okay, and now I'm going to get my 3 8 inch angle brush and wet it in my water jar and kind of
kind of tap it out so it's damp. And I'm actually going to kind of skip down to the uh, sand because it goes up into sand and then it slowly turns into where you can't see the sand anymore. So even the part with the water is going to have some sand color until it disappears. So I'm going to get some unbleached titanium and it's got a little bit of pink in it. So a little bit of pinkish, brownish, yellowish. <laughs> I don't really know exactly what you call it, but it's got a few different colors in there. So I'm getting the unbleached titanium, deep magenta, cadmium yellow medium, and I'm going to get some of the uh, burnt umber just to darken it some. And we'll see how that goes. Maybe a little bit more pink. And I might add some more white to it. Just trying to get it the right color. And if you don't get it the exact color I'm using, it's okay because sand from different beaches has different colors and tints and things. So if it's more pink, then, you know, maybe it's just a more of a pink sand beach, you know? It's more brown, maybe it's more of a brown sand beach. You just, you can kind of be creative with the color of the sand. And I think I'm going to need to do more coats on this because it's kind of, uh, not covering as much as I would like it to, but that's okay. We can do that later. So if you enjoy this video, um, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, this is the first beach tutorial that I've done, but I'm hoping to do more because I really like doing seascapes and beaches and stuff. So I have some animals and some landscapes and stuff on there. So if you're a beginner or you know, maybe you're more experienced but you enjoy watching other people paint or you know anything like that, um, I have step-by-step -step tutorials so you can see everything that I do. And if you do end up painting this, you can request to join my Facebook group, Powers Paint and Post, and um, you can post your paintings you've done for my tutorials in there. So I just lightened it up quite a bit by using the titanium white and I'm just going to kind of streak some lighter color in there. Just so it kind of lightens it up just a little bit. Alright. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same color. But I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a different thing with it. So I'm going to go up here. So this was the line that the sand stopped. So this is what we're working on now is like a wet, like wet sand. So the wave like just came, but now it's gone. It's disappeared. And I'm adding a little bit more water so it's a little bit more thinned out. But that'll make sure that we can see the where it jumps. So, but we'll we'll go over it more times later. So, if it's a little thin now, it's okay. So I'm just go going over it with the sand color first, and I may end up you. I think I may end up using some glazing liquid. So, I'm gonna have that out to the side. I forgot I used that, but. It's good to kind of make it look uh, watery down here. So I'm going to add a little bit of this blue to the sand. And in certain spots, it's got like a blue tint to it. Kind of like, oh, I got a hair. Kind of like the uh, sky is Kind of making that uh, blue tint on the water. I don't know what the deal is. There's a hair that doesn't want to come out. 
There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I think hair is probably like the artist's worst nightmare. <laughs> it's like it doesn't want to come out. I don't understand. It's just super sticky. Okay, so I'm just kind of going side to side will help it look more like water and like reflect the reflection is in the the water. Okay, and then there's also some pink tint. So I'm adding the pink to the lighter sand color. And I'm gonna put some of that kind of in here. I don't really know exactly what's making it pink. I guess the pink in the sand is showing up more. I'm not sure. So it's very, uh, very, it's not really ugly, but it's not in the prettiest stage yet, for sure. Beaches, I don't think beaches are very ugly. They don't really have a very bad ugly stage, like most paintings do. Okay, so I'm rinsing my brush out real good now. And I'm going to take my phthalo blue. I'm just going to mix it right into here because it's not going to affect the color that much. You may want to use a bigger brush for this, but I think this will work pretty good. So it's about half and half of ultramarine and phthalo blue is what I'm doing. Okay, and this is where you're going to really want to Make sure the horizon line is straight. So you can tape it down, some painter's tape if you want. But I, th I find it hard to make sure it doesn't uh, get under the tape. It tends, for me, it'll, it'll soak up under the tape and it ends up being more messy when I use the tape, but if it's easier for you, then go ahead. I'm going to try not to make any ridges in the paint. So sometimes when you do a line like this, it'll and make a ridge right up against that where you stopped and it's kind of, it doesn't look so good, I don't think. So just try not to do that. And if you do end up kind of going over, we can probably fix it when we do the clouds because they're kind of all down here, so make a little mistake don't worry because acrylics are very forgiving you can go over them and redo areas and I mean you could if you did a painting and you just really hated it you could just go over it with gesso and sand it down again and just restart <laughs> so it's really good that way Okay, so you can see kind of how far I'm going down, probably halfway to the line, maybe a little lower than that. So to this line that we did for the big wave. Doing that. Okay. And we're going to go over this probably a second time too, so don't worry if it doesn't completely cover because we're going to fix that. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of 
phthalo green and it's going to make it kind of like a teal color, like a turquoise kind of color. And it's kind of missing a little bit with this white over here, so it's lightened up just a little. And I'm just going to put a little bit right before it gets to the wave. I really love these blues and things. I guess that's why I like doing sea seascapes for one reason. It's because I love water, I love oceans, and I love blues and greens. I mean, I like other colors too. I like probably almost every color, but um, I just really, I pretty much always like blue, blue and green together. So here I'm going to, actually, I think I'm going to rinse my brush out from that. And it's like um, when the wave, right before the wave crashes, it's like a really light green. So I still have a little bit of that blue in my brush, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to get the phthalo green and yellow, the cadmium yellow medium. And it's going to make this really light green. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten it up, but it's very yellowy, right about that color right there. And I'm just going to put it right up along where the wave is going to be and it kind of disappears right in here. So the wave kind of stops right in here. And so I'm just going to take some of this teal and mix it with that and kind of make it disappear a little bit. Okay. I really love this painting. It's just so pretty. I love the picture. I mean, I just really like the beaches with the waves and the whitewash and stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to take the unbleached titanium. I'm not going to really worry about the green in there, I don't think. I'm going to take some of the blue that was there and some of the burnt umber and I'm gonna, it's going to turn it like a gray color. If you don't like the green in there you can take it out but I don't think it's going to be that bad. It'll be pretty good. Okay so then I'm going to put that up against the green kind of blend, blend it in right against there. This is a really, really fun painting. I mean, it's beautiful and it's fun and it's, it's just really, really fun. You should really try it. It's just super, really, I can't really describe how fun it is to do this one. It's really, really neat. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of, so you can kind of see how it's, just kind of disappearing. So we're trying to make this effect where it's crashing over here and then it kind of just disappears and there's not a wave anymore. Okay. And I'm just going to pull that down probably, I guess, pretty much all the way down. I mean, it's I'm going to get a little bit more blue with it and and you don't have to worry about it uh, blending into this color because this is where the wave is kind of, you know, going up against the sand. So uh, it's, it's going to have some white over it anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about that. 
I don't know what you call that. I mean, I know this is where the wave crashes, but I don't know what you call it when it's like not there, but the sand is wet, and I don't know what you call it when it's the wave has already crashed and it's just kind of going on the sand. There's probably some kind of word for it, but I don't know what it is. Alright, so, so what you can do is kind of put some, uh, put some places where it's kind of coming up and then in and, you know, so that it doesn't just look flat. You want to kind of give it some waviness. Okay, so that's our first layer done. It already kind of looks like an ocean even though it, I mean, you can kind of kind of see it. <laughs> so this, this is pretty dry, so I think I'm just going to kind of go ahead and start on the clouds because I don't really think I need to dry it. So I'm rinsing my brush out as good as I can from that color. Okay, so now I'm going to use the angle brush to fill in the clouds. But I'm going to uh, use a, the mop or the deer foot for uh, doing the fluffy part, kind of blending them. But um, I've got a white scribal pencil, so it's a water soluble pencil again. And I think the big one is kind of right off in the center, so kind of in here. It's kind of hard to see with these, this light color, but you can kind of see when I paint it in where the, it's kind of give an indication of where it is. You can see the back of it, but it's kind of disappeared into the color back here. There's another one kind of over here. And one kind of right here in the middle. Or a little off in the middle. And then over here it just kind of fluffs out. I'm not even going to really draw it because it's so light. I'll just go along as I'm painting it as I go along. So first I'm just going to take the white and get some water to just make sure it's not so thick. Okay and the clouds will take a few layers too. I've got a little bit of the color still in my brush but it's not really affecting it enough to worry about. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try the mop brush, we'll just see how it goes. So I'm going to lay down the color, just kind of tapping it in, and then I'm just going to do a small section and then I'm going to tap with the mop brush and kind of just give it some feathery kind of look to it. So I'm just kind of tapping and kind of doing a circular motion. And you can see that it's, uh, it's not completely covering so that blue is showing through. But that's not what we're gonna have to do, more layers, so. I'm not going to worry about that. And just do small sections so that it doesn't dry out before you get to do the next steps. But you're going to want to try to work quickly because if it starts drying and then you go back over with the mop, it can lift and make weird ugly splotches on your board. So just try to keep from that 
keep that from happening. I don't like this solid hump there, so I'm going to kind of flatten it out by putting some there. And don't be afraid of making it bumpy. I mean, if you don't like it, you can go back and kind of fix some stuff. And I'm going to keep this side pretty fluffy too, so that when I go back, I can kind of blend with it. So I'm just kind of doing the one side. Um, and putting that where I want to and then just kind of letting this side just go wherever it wants to because I'm not going to do any of that until later. Just trying to fluff it up a little bit. And this goes down almost to the bottom, but not quite. So it kind of, it goes down to right before it hits the water and then it kind of turns darker but I'm just putting in this lighter color and then I'm going to take uh, some ultramarine blue I'm just going to mix it over here because that under there is kind of dry and some burnt umber I'm doing equal parts but I'm going to do it more on the brown side at the moment. And you want to add a lot of white. So this is a gray in the clouds. So uh, your brain is going to probably tell you, you know, a cloud just kind of, you know, looks like this right here. That's what a cloud is. But by doing these other shapes and putting more different, you know, different colors um, and making shadows and stuff, it'll look more realistic because your brain is going to think that, you know, a cloud is just white, you know, because, you know, when you think of a cloud, that's kind of the way you think of it as being is just white, but really it has all these other colors in here that you may have never noticed before. But when you start painting them, you realize, hey, there's all these other colors going on in here. And I'm just taking the white kind of as I go along and just blending with it a little bit. But you can see it's a very ugly cloud at the moment, but we'll fix it. We just got to get some color in for us to have something to work with. So right now I'm just kind of getting the shapes and just a little bit of a variation of different colors. Okay, and then the white cloud kind of comes out to here and kind of makes this other little section clouds. I'm getting sticky, but I'm just gonna try doing this. I think we have a little bit more time, but not a lot. It's getting to where it doesn't want to go anywhere. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some phthalo blue and some ultramarine blue and get a lot of white with it. So this is going to be the color that's it's disappearing into this color back here. So it's the you can make it a little different than the color of the background, but not so different that it's like whoa that stands out. So you want it to be uh, different enough you can tell where the end of the cloud is but similar enough that, you know, it, it's not like this weird dark spot or this weird light spot.
Okay. So it's it's pretty ugly, but we'll keep working with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some of this uh, more of a grayish, but it's still got the blue in there. And then some more white kind of comes up over here. And then the blue kind of makes it disappear a little bit. And I I did the sky over here a little lighter than last time. So, but I mean, you know, that's one thing I like about painting is that every time you do it, it's going to come out different. So you really don't know what you're going to get, even, even if you've done it already. So that's really neat to me. You know, the same person can do the same painting a hundred times, or he could take, you know, like 30 years and, you know, be super careful with every brushstroke and try to make it just like the painting that he did before, but it's just not, it's not going to come out that way. And I just think that's really neat because every painting is unique for that reason. And also to know that every artist is going to have a different way of painting. I, when I first started, I kind of wanted to be just like uh, another painter that I knew because I really liked the way that she painted, but, you know, I realized it's just never going to happen. It's, I mean, I might could get it close, but, you know, I have my own way of doing things and that's actually better, really, because then you can, you know, explore different techniques and stuff and see which ones you like better. And it makes you unique being, you know, having your own ways of doing paintings so no one else can do it just like you. And that's even true if you're a beginner, no one else is going to do it just like you do. Okay, and I'm going to get some more white with this blue because it's lighter down here. And use that as the bottom. So you can see it, it's pretty close, but like down here it's even lighter, so it's a little different, but that's kind of a good thing. We want it to be a little different so that it looks just a little bit like there's some clouds going on. So I still had some of that blue, but I got some more white and I'm getting a little bit of this gray, so it's like a lighter gray blue. And I'm going to put some of that over here. I think I'm going to add more lighten it up. And just make some indications of clouds. I don't think I'm going to do too much over here at the moment, but I want to put a little bit of it in. The mop brush is actually working fine for this size canvas too, but this is the only mop brush I have, so I should probably get some other sizes so that if I do different size boards and I need need it, then I'll have it. But for now, I haven't, up till now, I haven't had a problem with using just the one. Actually, I think I'm just going to fill this whole thing in with white at the moment. And there's some down here. And then right in between them is a darker blue. We can put some gray. Okay. I think it's doing great.
pretty good. It's kind of an odd shape right here. This cloud is kind of a weird shape. Kind of got a little tail thingy right over here. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do for the clouds at the moment. So they're still pretty ugly, but you get the idea of what it's gonna look like. So I'm rinsing my brush out, and I'm gonna just dip my mop in the water just a little bit to get some of that blue out, but I'm gonna tap it off as much as I can just don't want it to dry in there because when you use the mop brush you want it to be uh, as fluffy as it can be but sometimes you just need to wet it that's why it would be a good idea to get more than one all right so now I think I can do some more on this area over here, the dark blue. So I'm doing about half and half of each of my blues again with some white. So I'm, last time I didn't do any white, but I'm gonna do a little bit because then I can, when I do some waves, I can put some darker in there and it'll show up. If I just did it full on dark, it wouldn't show up. I don't know, I, I might, might could have added some burnt umber to it, but so yeah, it's definitely covering better this time. If you go over, like I said, you can go back later and kind of cover that up. I may even do that right now before I forget. So I'm going to get some of my light blue, maybe some, probably more of a lighter like this color here. And if it turns out lighter or darker or whatever, it'll just look like a cloud. So that's good. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of this green again and add it to make like a teal. And put that in the water right before it gets to this light green. The light, uh, light yellowy green. Putting the greens in the ocean really makes it look real. Because if you didn't put, you know, oceans really do have green. So if you just did a bunch of blue, you know, if you did like dark blue and then a lighter blue and then the lightest blue, it really wouldn't look as much like an ocean. You need to have the greens and things in there. Okay, so now I'm getting the lighter green and I'm gonna take it and pull it down so it looks like the wave is, because this part is kind of vertical because the wave is coming up and is then going back down to crash. So it is going to be going up and down. And I'm just going to go across this whole 
wave here and do this. So then when it starts getting to where it disappears, I'm going to start going sideways, back and forth. And I am going to put a little bit of it in this area that's kind of disappearing, but I don't want to have too much. So I'm going to get that darker green again and go back. Alrighty. So, let's see, just put it down a little further, just to make sure that I got it down the length that I need it. Alright, so then I'm going to rinse my brush out, and you get as much of that green out as you can, and then get the unbleached titanium. Let's see. I think I need to get some of this paint off here. Where is my... Okay, here we go. So I'm going to... Since this is a glass palette, I can scrape off any areas I don't need. So I'm going to get this blue off because I don't need that. I still need the, the grays and stuff, but I don't need this. Other color here. Just wiping it to get the extra water off. All right. Okay, so getting the unbleached titanium and um, let's see, some of this gray was in here. So the unbleached titanium and the gray that we mixed. And I'm going, actually, maybe more of that. So I'm going up against there. And I want it to blend, so I'm getting some of that green. So I'm just trying to get it. You want it flat on the top. Because even though we're going to have some whitewash, we, there are certain areas that don't have any whitewash. So if it doesn't have any of that, then it would be flat on the top. So I'm just going to blend it in right up against there. And I didn't mean to put that over there, but that's okay. to blend a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna get that green out now. And I'm just gonna use this gray and put that on there. So this is the gray we use for the clouds. And I'm going to add some ultramarine. I'm going to basically make the gray again over here just with more of the phthalo blue. So ultramarine blue, burnt umber, 
white and then I'm adding more phthalo blue to make it darker. So the reason I'm adding this darker is since the um, we're going to have a lighter color here, I want it to kind of have a darker color up against it so that the white will stand out. I'm going to do that against the whole thing here. All right. And I may even add a little bit of this pink in here. Looks like a little bit of that might be showing up. Turns it a little purpley. No, maybe it's what I had in the brush already. But all right. And then I'm gonna do the disappearing color here. The a uh, wave that's just wet, wetted the sand. Wetted, that's not a word. Um, <laughs> the sand that's wet here from a wave. Um, I'm going to use this color here. And I'm adding more bleach titanium to it. I'm getting more gray. Use some more of the blue. So it's, it's not a here on bleach titanium. I'm kind of dirtying it up by using some of the deep magenta and the blue and the gray. Let's see how that it's a little too green. So I'm gonna add more of the magenta with the bleach titanium and burnt umber and see how that goes here. Okay yeah that's a lot better. So this is like an unbleached titanium, a deep magenta, burnt umber mixture. I'm just going to put that on the whole thing. And remember to kind of make it wavy. So that it looks like the wave had crashed there. All right, and then I'm going to get some of this blue. And there's a lot of blue all right over here. It's actually more of a uh, ultramarine blue. So I'm going to mix some of the ultramarine blue with that color there and blend that in and going back and forth so it looks like water, wet sand. And the blue, I think it's, I think it's picking up the blue in the sky. Because like this area that has a lot of blue, it's got a lot of blue down here. So I think that's what's happening. Could be wrong, but. All right, and then that pink will make it look like wet sand as well. But I'm gonna get a little bit more of the unbleached titanium and just put some of that in there just for a little more of the pure sand color. But that's pretty much how you make it look like wet sand. And while I've got this color I'm adding more bleach titanium to that and a little bit of burnt umber, maybe a little bit of the yellow for this. Oof, it's way too green. What? I don't know why. I get the blues, I guess, that I had in there. 
because the unbleached titanium and the blue together kind of turns a little bit green because it uh, has the unbleached titanium has some yellow in it. So I keep making green sand. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm just going to put some of this down here and try to kind of make the edge with that kind of, I don't want it to be uh, a ruffled edge, I want it to be smooth. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good here. We do have a lot more work on the clouds though. So I'm just filling in the whole bottom of the sand again. Okay, but now I'm going to get some white, so it's lightening it up quite a bit. Okay, and I'm going to put some of that in there. Again, to lighten it up so that there's some darker areas and some lighter areas and I'm, I'm okay if it streaks a little because it'll kind of make it look like humps and stuff in the sand a little bit okay but there are some areas that are you know they got like humps and things from people stepping on the sand and stuff so I'm making the ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixture for the gray. And I'm just going to kind of go to the side and just put little kind of little areas that are shadowed from it not being perfectly flat. And you could also spray the sand, take a toothbrush or a fan brush and uh, spray the, or uh, water the down, water the paint down, not water the down paint. <laughs> I was going to say that completely flipped around. Water the paint down to be like a milk consistency and then you can uh, splatter the sand. So you could do it that way if you wanted to. But I just decided to do it this way this time. I don't really do it like this a whole lot. So I, after I put the dark, I'm kind of going back with like a white and unbleached titanium mixture and kind of going over it just to soften it up and make it not look so dark. You can put as much or as little of it as possible. You could even put that and then also spray it for extra if you wanted to. I mean, I've never done that. I don't know, it might not look so good, but you could try it. <laughs> if you don't like it, you could do it again, so. All right. Okay, so I think the sand is pretty good. And you could like put writing in the sand by taking the dark color and taking the tip of your brush and kind of dotting in words or something. If you wanted to do that or initials or whatever to make it look like you drew in the sand. Okay, so now I think I'm going to go back to the clouds again. So I'm rinsing out that color. I got some more uh, lighting uh, just now. I remembered I had a lamp in my room that just might put out some good light and I switched the light bulb and I think it's doing pretty good. It's not, it's not very, uh, it's a lot brighter than it's been being, which is good. I mean, every little bit helps, so, whoops. My goodness, I got that good, didn't I? 
<laughs> My goodness. Most of that off there. Yeesh. One time I uh, had on, it wasn't really a long sleeve shirt, but it was probably, you know, like down to here. And I like, somehow the palette like jumped up and slapped me in the arm. <laughs> it's like they got paint everywhere. It's kind of funny now, but. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting uh, the white and I'm just going to kind of go back and fill this in. And I'm going to use my mop brush again. It's not too wet. Let's see here. Pretty good. I think it's doing great. Okay, so we're just going to keep on going like that. And I think it being uh, it being a little wet is kind of helping it to blend out on this side, so that's good. So when it's uh, damp, you kind of have to be more careful with making sure that it is fluffy because it can kind of make some strange marks and not want to blend very well. So There's some white here, kind of goes out. All right, and we're gonna get some of this gray color and lighten it up. even get a lot of white with the blue and just put some of it in here just to give it a little bit of blue color and let's see now what happened to my let's see right here is this it Okay, so I'm getting the phthalo blue and the white, and it had a little bit of ultramarine blue in it, but it's pretty close. Let's see, need to get a little bit more. That's better, so I just made it a little darker. seeing darker color okay and then I'm gonna go back and get the white and put some of it where the I guess it's lighter right here coming up over the dark. So there are quite a bit of weird, ugly stages here. But. And just keep layering. a lot lighter here. 
or so. And lightening it up. And I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue with this and there are some uh, dark clouds that are kind of right in here. So they're kind of purpley. some low ones mm. there's some of this purpley color in here Okay, and then I'm going to get a gray again with the ultramarine blue and red umber. And the white. I think I need more white. Real quick, get some of that out. And all of my paints are... Liquitex and Liquitex Basics and Artist Loft, um, but I'm kind of trying out the golden at the moment. Okay, so the only thing I'm using for golden from go golden is the. Uh, the white at the moment. Okay. And I also used the Ad Glazing Medium from Golden. Okay, and I'm going to rinse my brush out real good and try putting some more white in to make that lighter in those light areas. So I'm just going to go back over this white. And try to just fluff it out again, like I did the first time. And there's some white kind of up here. Making a, another white area. So when you got the dark in there, it's a little bit hard to get lighter colors in there. This is pretty much dry. This big giant cloud here. So I'm going to try to lighten it up.
put some over here. Put some more right there so that it's not so dark. Give it a little more of that. And I think I'm going to take some of my unbleached titanium and add some of that in a few areas to give it another color. In the lighter areas. And we're going to get some of the gray too and put, let's see, I want it a little darker than that, just so it'll show up better. Because there are some dark pockets even in the lighter parts of the clouds. We'll probably go back another time and put even more white in. Make sure that it's really bright and fluffy. Putting the dark over here. And get some of the blue for this one to kind of make it more of a blue color. All right, I think I'm gonna let that dry and then we can add some more white and brighten it up. But for the moment, it's pretty good, so. All right. And this would look really good on like a long canvas, you know, like long and short, long, because um, the picture is that way. Um, the board I did it before is kind of more of this shape, but because I don't use the long ones very often, but it would look really good, I think, long. And you could space out the clouds a little bit more because this one is really more like out here somewhere, <laughs> but you just can't tell because, you know, I need to fit it in there in this small space. Okay, so... I'm going to take my small little round brush and take the uh, phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. So I'm going to do like the waves far back in the water. So there's going to be some dark areas for some shadow and then some lighter areas where the sun is hitting it or uh, the reflection from the clouds are so I'm loading it up and kind of you know making sure it's to a point just by spinning it and pulling down and I'm gonna just make little uh, horizontal uh, lines in the water you can do it different lengths but you want to keep it fairly small and I'm going to do most of these super dark ones uh, in the areas that there aren't any clouds 
So, you know, here there are, you know, there's like a gap. And then on here, far back especially, there are little lines. You could probably do it with a uh, angle brush too. Do the lines with that. And if you had an even smaller brush, it would probably be even better, but this is the smallest one that I have that'll come to a point like this, so. But you wanna get these uh, dark lines so it'll look like shadow waves and things, but the darker areas. And even in the lighter parts where you're seeing the reflection from the clouds and stuff, there will be some dark, just not quite as much. And you want to do it as straight as you can to make it look like water, go horizontal. If you get like a big patch like that, where they kind of all merge together, you can go back with some lighter. Uh, I'm about to do that. Go back with some lighter and change the blob. Whoops. <laughs> mm. I got some white in there, accident. So we're just gonna fill in the whole ocean with these little stripes. And I might, I don't think I did this last time, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna take some of my phthalo green with that and make it more of a dark teal and put that in. I mean, why not experiment, right? I mean, if you don't like it, you can cover it up, so. And the closer up uh, it gets to these uh, waves, I'm gonna try to make it even skinnier. So I'm going to go back and forth, but only every once in a while put the brush down so that it makes these, it'll, it'll swipe the canvas really quickly and make little lines. Your brush has to be, it has to have a lot of paint in it for it to really work. got that filled pretty much in good now I'm going to take some of my white and add that blue so it can still be pretty dark so this is probably about the color up here and you're going to want to put some of those in add some water to make it flow off my brush better. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to take my rag and wet it and wipe that off. Okay, fixed.
again if you get like a big blob of this lighter color then you can go back with the darker if you want to and make that not look so bad if you don't like it. But we still want some of that color that we had down already to show. We're just giving it some extra color and texture and stuff to make it look like water. See, I've got it kind of got too much there, so I'll fix that in a minute. Got too much there too. Alright, so I'm going to get some of that darker and kind of make that not look so uh, obvious. Alright, and now I'm going to add more white. It's even lighter. And with this, I'm going to be a little more careful with where I put it. So I'm going to put it right where these clouds are and it's kind of putting like a reflection of white or light blue clouds. I mean it obviously doesn't look like clouds in the water but you can see it is lighter where the clouds are. And there is a little bit over here, I guess, from these lower ones, maybe. I'm getting some water to help it flow better. Okay, now I'm getting a lot more white. So we're just lightening up more and more every time. So this is going to be our lightest color. It is very, very light, just with a little bit of blue. Okay, and we're gonna do some of that. Not as much as the other, though. We don't wanna overpower it. And I might put a little bit back here. Not a whole lot. And then I can take this darker blue, any areas that I don't really like, I can kind of put some darker and change it. Okay, so that's our uh, water. I don't like that it kind of it's got like a dot here, so I'm gonna change that. There we go. And I might get more of that just to put it back in its place. Alright, so that's done. Well, every time I say it's done, I see something else that I don't like and I go back. Alright, now that part is done. I think. I think I'm good with it now. I've got paint all over my fingers. Okay. Um, so now I think I want to do a little bit more with this, but since it's dry and I can't... Whoops. I can't... Um, can't blend wet into wet. I don't want to have to go over that whole thing. I put out a little bit of that glazing liquid that I showed you earlier. So it, you can see it a little bit over here. <laughs> it's, I 
dirtied it up so much it's kind of hard to see but I'm going to take some of that and I want to put a little bit more kind of like a pink color but I don't want it to be super powerful okay so I'm getting a lot of glazing liquid with it And I'm just brushing some more of the pink on. I might even do some of the unbleached titanium and do some of that. Way too bright. I'm just adjusting it a little bit. just got the glazing medium and the ultramarine blue and put down where I want it to stand out that that's the waterline Good. And now for the white wash, I'm going to do, I'm going to take my angle brush and I'm going to do just the pure white. Well, let me see. I might take some of this gray, grayish first. So this is like phthalo blue and burnt umber instead of the ultramarine blue and burnt umber, it's phthalo blue with white. And I'm adding a lot of white to it. And I'm just going to add some lines. color in there. 
This is very similar to what we had on there already. Okay, so now I'm going to take the white and do, do it closer and closer to the end of that section. to the end, I'm going to kind of tap so that it'll flare out just a little. And I'm going to tap in the end of that wave. So this part is rolling on the sand, and we're going to add a shadow so that it'll look like, like it's 3D. If you don't add a shadow, it won't look as realistic. Then I'm going to tap kind of in here where I had some of the lines, just to kind of, so it's not like lines, 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 tapping. You want it to kind of gradually turn into the next brush stroke. Okay, and then I'm going to get this dark blue with the burnt umber. And the uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to make sure that I got a point on my brush. And I'm just going to do a thin line under here. Okay, and we'll go over with some more white so it's not like we just drew a line, we'll go over it so it doesn't look like it's popping out. <clears throat> so I'm rinsing that brush out, and I'm going to get the one-fourth deer foot, and I'm not going to wet it or anything because you want it dry. And I'm going to add a little, I'm just going to take a little bit of this gray just at first and put some of that down here. I'm going to take some of that darker because you want it to have a little bit of shadow. take the pure white and tap very gently using the tip of the brush and kind of stops over here and there's a little bit on the side and about right 
here and we'll go back down. This is all pretty much going down to the bottom. And some of this darker is going to be kind of right in here. And then over here, it's going to come and meet up this one. I'm going to do the studio tap very lightly right here. And then start tapping a little harder to get to the thicker part. And then there's also some right in here. So there's it's going to be really thick right there, and then thin on these other. It's going to be like a lot of white right in the center, but then it'll be less to get over. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to take this angle and get some more of this green. Let me see if I can do this. I don't know if I'll like it, but we'll see. I'm gonna try to move this down. And then take the white, kind of make it look like it's crashing the middle there. Okay, so I'm missing the angle brush out, but I'm gonna do a little bit more right here. I don't want it so dark. Make it a little more white. And get some of this gray in the glazing liquid and try to do Gonna get it to mix in with these different stripes here. Alright. And got a little bit of pink over here. I don't know how that got on there, but. So I'm adding some unbleached titanium to the sand in some areas. I know that this is a longer one, but it'll it'll be really good. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so that's pretty much all for the wave. I might do just a little bit 
to the top. All right, and let's see, actually, I'm going to refill with just a little bit of white go up. So it looks like it's splashing up. You know, they got the, the splatters that kind of come up. And you could spray it with um, using a toothbrush or something. But I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to lightly tap and get some small dots to come up. Just kind of make some little tiny dots kind of splash up. You know, I think I want to change that. See how easy it is when it's still wet. You can just wipe it off if you don't like it. Instead of this one's kind of already finished its whitewash stage so I'm going to kind of make it splash up over here when it's still kind of in the middle of the crash. Okay and then I'm going to take my angle brush and my mop brush again for the final um, white the clouds. I'm going to kind of go around some of the dark areas so that we can kind of keep them. But I'm going to cover it over just a little so that it doesn't look like we're trying to make it a halo or anything. You can kind of skip a few spots so that it clouds kind of do that. They'll be light and then they'll skip to dark and then they'll be light again and then they'll skip back to dark. So you can kind of do that. Do a little bit over here. And I'm going to get a little bit of pink just because there's a little bit of pink in these clouds down here.
Okay. I think we're ready for the birds now. I think, I think we're pretty good. So we're going to rinse these brushes out. Well, I do see one more thing though. Putting some darker blue under that so it just turns into white a little slower. Okay, that's good. And I'll rinse those brushes out. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest with the birds with this small brush. And so here's the pictures that I have for the birds. So this is the one that's the farthest away. So I'm going to zoom in, see if I can flip this around so that I can zoom in real good. Well, I'm going to zoom out and show you where I'm doing it though. I'm going to do it about right here, okay? That's where I'm going to try to have the bird be. So I'm going to get um, the ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixture. So about half and half and make it really dark. And I'm going to water it down just enough to help it flow with my brush. And it has like a... The body is just like a little flat thing like that and then it comes in out there. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out, get all the color out, and then I can take my wet brush and lift any color that I don't want on there. So I can kind of make him skinnier or shape his wings. However, I want to do that. And I think I'll put a little bit more right there on his wing. And then I'm going to take some white and put a little on his belly. And the edge of his wing. And then I'm gonna get that gray back again and kind of get that back to the way I want it. I don't want that much white. So you just want to do it on the edge of his wing. in the back of his tail a little bit. I'm going to wet, uh, rinse my brush out again Oop. so that it's wet and then lift some of that off. Okay, so there's one and then the other I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do him like right here, and he's going to be a bigger one. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see that. Okay. And this is the reference photo I'm using for him. I know it's really small, so you can hardly see it, but. So I'm going to take that dark and do his wing. And you could draw them in first, but I'm just going to go ahead and paint them in. There's another wing that kind of comes and cuts this one off.
feels really thin. feet come out like that and his beak comes out I'm gonna rinse my brush out so that I can shape his beak whoops want it to disappear. <laughs> I keep uh, watering it down. I... trying to make it darker because it got a little lighter than I wanted it. So this is way bigger than it grew to be, but I'm putting the color in. It looks kind of like a toucan right now, <laughs> but now I'm rinsing my brush out to get the color out. And then I'm going to lift that color off. Okay, and then I'm going to get that darker again to his head. Back. And now I'm rinsing my brush out again to shape his beak. And then the, his head is more off like that. It's getting really watery so I'm going to make a little bit more brush out Okay, and then I I made it really, really dark. So, so I'm going to take the white and put it on to this side of the wing. And Put it on the belly. And on the head. And I'm going to take like a in between gray. Put that on there, and then I'm going to take the really super dark, the 
the ultramarine blue and burnt umber and go up against I'm going to do this wing and then the edge of this wing. And then I'm going to take the white and kind of brighten up this bottom part. And I'm going to take the white and brighten up this whole edge. Just to give it uh, some lighter so you can see where that wing stops. And it's kind of like a highlight from the sun. And there's a little bit on his head of this dark. And then the rest is white. take the, the dark and give him a little bitty eye and take the white again to kind of shape where I want that to go. I'm going to take some of the dark, kind of make his wings a little bigger. take the middle gray and try to kind of color in his face and the back of the body a little bit and then take the white and go back and lighten it up some all right Pretty good. I think I want to darken up his uh, feet a little though. There you go. Okay. Zoom out. And the next one is going to be right here. I'm going to zoom that in here, okay, and this is the picture that I'm using, so let's see, I'm going to put it on this side, so I'm going to take the white and his body, I'm going to make him a little smaller. So the one flying up here is closest to us. And this one on the ground is the middle sized one. And then the one way far back is the smallest little one. Okay, and then I'm going to get there really dark. And... He has a wing right in here. And I'm going to just kind of take some medium gray and add it to this side of his head. Shadow it a little bit. And 
taking the gray and giving it some highlights here and back here. But there's still really dark right here where the neck is before you get to the wing. And then I'm going to get that really dark and do the little feet. See, that's too far apart. So I'm going to pick that up. Okay, and then since that one's a lot bigger, I'm going to wet my brush and take off some of that color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dark and kind of do some side to side motions like he's, his feet are in the water and you can't see where they are. And that way it makes it a little easier and you don't have to put in feet. You just give the blurry indication of dark down there. And then for the beak and the eye, I'm going to do See, the eye is way too far up there. So the eye is like back. Let's see, we need to lighten that up so you can see it better. Just lighten it a little bit. And then keep the dark right in here. Okay, and get the dark color and do a little dot right behind there. Let's see. And then I'm going to take some of the middle gray and kind of do a little bit of gray in between his beak and his eye. His wing needs to be a little longer. He's kind of got a short body there. And then taking that middle gray and let's see, maybe a little more white with it. Kind of. some texture to it. All right, that's pretty good. So, zoom out there. Okay, so we're done. So, um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. It was really, really fun. Um, if you do, you can share it with me on Powers Paint and Post Facebook group, like I said earlier. Um, and here's the schedule that I have for April. Um, so we're doing the galaxy tree next week. So that should be really fun. It's always fun when you get to splatter. So I hope you had um, fun painting this and that you'll join me next time. Bye.